I am DIY Mug, and today we are going to be making a bookshelf out of reclaimed scaffolding board. Come along for the journey, if you want. You don't have to. Let me put these down. These are really heavy. These two scaffold boards are going to be for the main structure of the bookcase, so the, the side pieces. Then there's going to have some shelves going up between them. I've already measured the space, so I know exactly what I'm working to. These boards are cut already just over two meters, and I need them at 200 centimeters, which is two meters. So first job is to cut these to size oh, and measure. Measure and cut. Now these have been cut down to size, I'm going to give them a little sand. I'm gonna start with a 40 grit, which is very cool. And I only use it on reclaimed wood. So I'm gonna start with a 40, then I'm gonna to go to an 80, then I'm gonna to go to a 120, and then I'm gonna finish off at a 240 grit. It got so cold yesterday, and my orbital sander just wasn't cutting it. So I went to screw fix, and I got some um, belt sander, pads for my belt sander. Uh, this is what I normally do my scaffolding boards with. Hadn't done for the first two years because I couldn't afford one, um, but highly recommend when you have enough money um, to get one of these belt sanders as they make make work, what they say? Make work lighter. doing the belt sander for these two planks. I'm going to do another plank for the, the shelves that are going in between. I'm going to get that done now. Then I'm going to go over them all with an 80 grid with the belt sander and then I'm going to start with the orbital sander again on the 120 and work my way up to the 240. So it's a long process but it'll be worth it in the end. With the orbital sander I have finished these two planks of wood and the one behind me and um, off with a 240 grit. So they are silky smooth. No splinters are coming out of those. And um, so now what I need to do, I need to cut the board behind me into the lengths that I need the shout. I'm going to have this and then this and then there's going to be a shelf in the middle. I know that I want the length 90 centimetres. Now each scaffold is three and a half way up, three and a half centimetres thick. So I need to take that into consideration when I am measuring out the length that I want in between it. I'm going to use my calculator because my brain doesn't do that. Um, and then I'm going to cut up the shelves. I'm so ashamed of using a calculator to work out that measurement. Three, three and a half centimetres thick. That's seven centimetres. Take away 90, 83 centimetres. I'm better than that. I am better than that. So out of that board, I can only get two 83 centimetres board, which is fine because what we can do, I'm going to do the top and the bottom first. We shall then secure it and then I'll do the rest. I know that this side is going to be the top of the shelf to map out just where I want the top shelf. Now I know I want the top flush, so this is pretty simple. Once marked, I'm going to do some pilot holes and then I'm going to count to sink out the piece. Then I'm going to screw in with screw. Now I can't find my drill piece with the counter sink already on, so I'm going to have to improvise and I've got a, a kind of well, I think it's a, a wood plug, which is kind of used for countersinking, but I'm going to cut out a piece of the wood using that. <laughs> for the bottom, I don't want it to sit flat on the ground. I want there to be a, a little indent before the shelf starts. This is just a case of measuring each end the same distance and then repeating the process that I've just done for the top shelf.
morning. It is another day, another sunny, dry day. Very cold though. This is where we got to yesterday. So I managed to secure the bottom and the top shelf. So today, what is left to do is to put the, the shelves going in down. Then I need to do some calculations and work out where I'm going to put the shelves so that they're equally distant. I take the measurement first from here to here and go with that first. Hundred eighty-eight centimeters. So I'm going to put three more shelves in. So I need to take the thickness of the scaffolding board, which is three and a half centimeters. So I need to take that into consideration when I'm trying to map out the equal distance. So I've got 188 centimeters on my on my calculator. So we're going to take away uh, 11 point, 10 point 3.5 plus 3.5 is seven. 8, 9, 10, 10.5. So clever! So take away 10.5 equals 177.5. I'm going to divide 177.5 by 4 equals 44.3 centimetres. So that is the distance that I need to put each, each board. So 43, we'll say 44.3 centimetres, then a shelf. 44.3 centimetres, then a shelf. 44 point centimetres from the shell. Could be totally wrong. We'll give it a go. Now I need to cut down three more boards and give the sand over as well at 83 centimetres and we can start assembling them. So I've cut and sanded my three shelves that I need to put in. Um, it took me a while, as you can probably tell. The sun has gone round no longer on my face. I'm going to time lapse this bit because it's the same method as those two shelves. So I'm going to drill them in and then I'll get back to you. This side is all screwed in. When it comes to this, I'm going to measure, but I'm also going to use a level just to make sure that it's straight so I can get it perfect. Now that the shelves are in and everything's level, I'm just going to go over with a 120 grit on the edges, just where they connect, and then I'm just going to 240 grit it everywhere just to make sure it's all, it's all good to go. So the last stage before I can wax or stain this is sorting out these holes that I have created to put the screws in. There's two things you can do. You can go to your local hardware store and purchase one of these dowel. They come in different sizes. Unfortunately, this size that I have is too small to fit these holes. So I'm gonna go for the other option by using another wood plug, which is slightly bigger than the one I use to actually make the holes. This then creates a wood plug that you can put in and cover the holes up. I'm going to drill into an old piece of scaffold to get the 20 that I need. I'm then going to take the shelves inside because I need to glue this process and it's so cold out here, the glue would never dry. And then I'll show you the next stage. for nearly 24 hours so I know it's all good to go. I'm going to get my saw and cut off the excess so it's flush. I'm then going to sand down with a 120 grit and then a 240 grit and then I'm going to stain in the colour that it needs to be. 